Now, one of the most popular questions I'm asked so much is how to convert your cake recipes for different size tins. So maybe you have a cake recipe that you want to try and it says that you're going to need a six inch tin, but all you have at home is an eight inch tin. Or maybe you want to make a slightly larger cake for more people. In this video, I'm going to show you how I take my six inch vanilla sponge cake recipe and convert it so I can use it in an eight inch tin. I'm going to be running through exactly how I do this and showing you how you can take any recipe and convert it for any size tin. Even if you usually use a round tin and you want to convert your recipe for a square tin. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do in order to work out how much ingredients we need for our new tin is work out the surface area of the tin that it asks for and the tin we want to use. Now, this does require a little bit of maths, but in order to make it a lot easier, I have done all of this for you. So I created a conversion chart, which has the different size tins running from a four inch tin right the way up to a 16 inch tin, both in round and in square. So I've worked out all the surface areas and you'll be able to see it here. I've also created a printable version. So I will put a link in the description below so that you can go away and print this off so that you can keep it with your recipes. So all you have to do anytime that you want to convert one of your cake recipes is take the surface area of the new tin that you want to use and divide this by the surface area of the tin that it asks for in the recipe. This is going to give you a number which is the number that you're going to use to adjust your ingredients. So as an example, the surface area of my 8 inch tin which I want to use is 50.24. I then want to divide this by the surface area of the original cake tin, which is 28.26. This is going to give me 1.77777. So I'll round this up to 1.8. So 1.8 is the number that we need to use to adjust our ingredients. So if our original recipe called for 340 grams of self-raising flour, you want to multiply this by your adjustment number, which will give you 612 grams which means for your new tin you need 612 grams of self-raising flour and you want to do this for all the ingredients in your list. Now this doesn't only work if you're increasing the size of your cake tin, you can also reduce the size of your cake tin. So maybe you have a recipe that calls for an eight inch tin and you wanna convert this so that you can use it in a six inch tin. What this is gonna do is give you a cake which is exactly the same height as your original cake would have been, but it's slightly larger or smaller depending on the size of the tin that you're using. So I'm now gonna use my six inch vanilla sponge cake recipe and convert this for my eight inch tins. I can then run through some of the other things that you might need to consider when converting your recipes. For the original six inch cake, I needed 340 grams of self-raising flour, 340 grams of butter, 340 grams of caster sugar, four eggs, and two tablespoons of vanilla extract. So if I multiply all of my ingredients by my adjustment amount, which is 1.8, I get 612 grams of self-raising flour, 612 grams of butter, 612 grams of caster sugar, 7.2 eggs, and 3.6 tablespoons of vanilla. Okay, so let's talk about the eggs. My six inch vanilla sponge cake recipe called for four eggs, but if I multiply four by 1.8, I get 7.2, and 7.2 eggs isn't always that easy to put into your cake mixture. Now, one way that you could do it is to weigh your eggs. In the UK, our medium eggs weigh around 60 grams. But what I tend to do is anything lower than 0.5, I'll scale down. So 7.2, I'll use seven eggs. And if it's 7.5 or higher, then I'll just round it up. So if it had been 7.5, I would have used eight eggs. Now, if you do find that you've rounded your eggs down and when you're creating your mixture, it is a little bit thick, what you can do is just add a splash of milk just to get it at the consistency you're looking for. Now, I will put some links in the description below to some of my favorite recipes, including a video where I go into more detail showing you how to make my vanilla sponge cake recipe. 
Now, once you've made your cake mixture and this is ready to go into your tins, there are a few things that you might want to consider. The first thing is the height of your cake tins. Now, for my vanilla sponge cake recipe, I usually divide this into two six inch tins and all of my tins are around two and a half inches in height. Now, the tin that I'm gonna be using for my eight inch cake is around three inches. So it's absolutely fine to do exactly the same and divide this into two tins. What I would then do once my cakes are baked is take each cake and divide this into two layers. But what happens if your cake tins maybe aren't as high as the ones that I'm using? Maybe your cake tins are only an inch or an inch and a half in height. What you then wanna do is instead of splitting it between two tins, split it between four tins or do it in two batches. This is gonna result in just baking your layers separately. So instead of cutting your cakes down, you'll already have your four separate layers. Now, the last thing that you're gonna to need to change when your cakes are ready to go in the oven is the temperature that you set your oven at and the amount of time that you bake them for. The larger you go with your cake, the longer it is gonna to take to bake. And if you have got it in the oven, you don't want the outside to burn. So with the larger cakes, you wanna reduce the temperature slightly. So for my eight inch cake, instead of cooking it at 180 degrees Celsius, I'm gonna reduce the temperature down to 170 and just keep checking on it until it's baked. Now each oven is different, so it is worth testing out the best temperatures and the best time to bake your cakes for. But one tip would be when you do think your cakes are baked, take a cocktail stick or a skewer and just poke it through the center. If your skewer comes out clean, then your cake is baked all the way through. Okay, so my cakes have been baked in my eight inch tins and I've left them to cool. Now I've also baked the same recipe but in the six inch tins just to show you the comparison. Now each of my layers is two inches in height and if I stack those on top of each other, you can see that I end up with two cakes that are exactly the same height. So my eight inch cakes have been scaled up perfectly from my six inch recipe. By using this method, this is gonna allow you to scale up any of your recipes for any size tins. These cakes are then ready to use so they can be leveled off and split into the different layers before being filled and covered and decorated. So that's how you can convert your cake recipes so that you can scale them up or scale them down for different size tins. I really hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and will find it useful in your own baking. If you have enjoyed the video, as always, don't forget to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then don't forget you can subscribe to the Cakes Bunny YouTube channel. You can also hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button and this will just alert you every time we upload a new video. Now, don't forget I will put a link in the description below so that you can download the conversion table for yourselves and print it out. So until next time, bye.